Coming up on today's episode of Airborne. The Civil Air Patrol is awarded with the Congressional Gold Medal for its World War II service. EASA certifies the Piaggio Avanti Evo. And the Government Accountability Office says a UAV rule is not likely before 2017. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. 46 founding Civil Air Patrol members were present on Wednesday to see the organization honored with a Congressional Gold Medal. For the service, they and more than 200,000 other CAP volunteers provided during World War II. They helped protect U.S. shipping against German U-boat attacks and carried out other vital wartime domestic missions. Speaker of the House John Boehner presented the medal to CAP National Commander Major General Joe Vasquez and former U.S. Representative Lester Wolf, who served in CAP's New York wing during the war. Boehner said the CAP members being honored were just private citizens who wanted to lend a hand. They also lent their planes, their two-way radios, and their replacement parts. They weren't pressed into serving, the government was pressed into letting them serve, end quote. And all 65 CAP members lost their lives in the line of duty by the end of the war, including 26 Coastal Patrol participants. Wolf said, quote, Every one of those lives was given to defend the nation. We accept this ward, particularly for those who did not come home, end quote. The European Aviation Safety Agency has certified the Piaggio Aerospace Avanti Evo after an extensive development and test program carried out under the supervision of the Italian National Civil Aviation Agency on behalf of EASA. U.S. certification from the FAA is expected within the next few weeks, as well as the Indian certification, as the first two Avanti Evo aircraft will be delivered to Indian customers. The EVO has a number of significant modifications approved by EASA that are intended to improve the Avanti design to boost efficiency, reduce operating costs, provide greater levels of comfort for passengers, and finally, be more environmentally friendly. Piaggio Aerospace says improvements in the Avanti EVO are seen in a lower noise signature, climb and cruise improvements through aerodynamic changes, a higher service ceiling, and improved passenger amenities, among other things. More refinements are planned for the immediate future. After the break, the Government Accountability Office says the FAA will miss the UAV rule deadline by a lot. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Aero TV or our website, send an email to news spy at aero news.net. While there has been a great deal of talk about a proposed rule for integrating UAVs into the national airspace system coming before the end of the year, the Government Accountability Office says a final rule is still a long way off. During testimony before the Aviation Subcommittee of the House of Transportation Committee, Dr. Gerald Dillingham, Director of Civil Aviation Issues for the GAL, said actual integration is still years in the future. The consensus of opinion is that the integration of unmanned systems will likely slip from the mandated deadline of September 2015 until 2017 or even later. Peggy Gilligan, the FAA's Associate Administrator for Aviation Safety, said, We are moving forward with UAS integration through rulemaking. As mandated by the Act, 
the FAA initiated rulemaking to permit civil operation of small UAS in, in the airspace. We all agree that that project is taking too long. Gilligan said that the FAA is trying to streamline the process for exemptions to enable broader use of civil UAS in the national airspace. Other parties contributed to the conversation, but for all the talking that's taking place, very little positive action on the part of the FAA is being seen. It's Friday at last, and that means it's time for our weekly barnstorming commentary. Today, our airborne broadcast is changing, and Jim takes another look into the airborne crystal ball. Here's this week's barnstorming. Thanks, Ashley, and hi, folks. Well, as noted previously, we started letting the cat out of the bag last week on some of the plans that we have uh, coming next year for something we call Airborne Unlimited, which is underneath a master plan we call Aeroverse, for obvious reasons. Well, we talked a little bit about what we're doing with Airborne Unlimited and with the programming. Let me go a little bit above and beyond that and then talk a little bit about the Airborne Partnership Initiative that supports it. First of all, there are six generations to what's coming up with Airborne. What you're going to see in January is Monday through Friday, much of what you've seen in the past, a little bit of programmatic shifting. But over a period of time, this sixth generation of Airborne will incorporate more live webcasting, more mobile webcasting, uh, a lot of uh, live interviews or archival or bringing people in from outside. We're also going to be bringing in a lot more uh, from the standpoint of outside contributors and a way to bridge the gap between just reciting the news and researching and presenting the news to bringing in the newsmakers that are part of the mix. But Beyond that comes the real brilliance of what's coming up here, and I wish I could take credit for it, but it's been an evolution over the last few years. As you may be aware, Aero News, Aero TV, and Airborne have pioneered uh, a lot of technologies. We've been live at special events. Uh, we've done a lot of archival and special event coverage. We've also done a tremendous amount of work with our Aero TV feature set, about 2,000 of those so far. And over a period of time, we've worked with a lot of outstanding associations, not necessarily the biggest associations in the world. Some of them are quite small, but a few of these associations are some of the hardest working, most expert people we've ever known. And it covers the gamut of everything from model planes to rocket planes. It covers hundreds of unique organizations, thousands of extraordinarily gifted people who all have a lot of information to present, a lot of news to present, and not necessarily the wherewithal that we have to get it out in front of everybody. So one of the really exciting parts of Airborne Unlimited is this, and we told you we had 109 reasons last, uh, last week, and guess what? It's 110 right now, and it's growing rapidly. We are taking on, as partners to the news effort, some of the greatest associations and organizations in aviation. I'm talking about AEA, EAA, Women in Aviation, SAFE, IMC Club, XPRIZE, ICAS, Commemorative Air Force, folks from up and down the line. We've got Sport Aviation, General Aviation, Defense, UAVs, you name it, we've got it. And the key here is the united front that aviation's really needed. When something was ha bad happening to the airline industry, the general aviation industry couldn't care less. When general aviation was being victimized, much in the commercial aviation segment couldn't care less. But the, part of the reason they couldn't care less is there wasn't enough exposure. This changes. We're all going to work together. We're all going to work cohesively. And we're going to present a united front that this industry has never seen before. And most important, the ability, once again, for everybody to preach to everybody else's choir. Much more. I will tip a little bit more of the hat uh, your way here in the coming weeks. But January 5th, we present Airborne Unlimited. You're not going to see a whole lot of big changes at first outside of Monday through Friday. But we've got a lot of incremental, a lot of evolutionary change that add up to what we hope will be one of the biggest revolutions in aviation media. And most important, while this may be a revolutionary tool, we don't see this as the answer to everything. What we do see it as a foundation and a conduit for many of the more revolutionary ideas and concepts that we need to rebuild aviation and aerospace anew. Got you interested? Good. Join us. We'll tell you how shortly. For the Aero News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell. And boy, are we busy building something amazing. 
the commemorative Air Force is poised to break ground on what it says will be a world-class aviation attraction following a 14-0 vote by the Dallas City Council on Wednesday. Writing on the CAF blog, Stephen Brown, president and CEO for the commemorative Air Force, called the vote, quote, a big day in the history of the CAF, end quote. Brown wrote in part, quote, it's been a long two years that this metamorphosis has taken place, from the initial board decision to make the move to the 23 cities that so graciously bid for us, and the final selection of Dallas Executive Airport, end quote. The next phase is to design and then build the CAF's new facility. Brown said, quote, I look forward to having a CAF national air base that is centrally located and is of such presence that all members will feel proud of their CAF headquarters, end quote. After these messages, it's a two-engine Jabiru for Africa. ADS-V will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADS-V today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-V out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Finally, the extraordinary story of the world-changing XPRIZE space competition is being told and illustrated with hundreds of insider photos in Jim Campbell's colorful new book, Beyond the Blue. Journey with Jim as he flies formation with spaceships, plays in zero gravity, prepares rocket racers, and documents the amazing first decade of the personal space race. Available this summer. Get your advance order in now by checking out www.kindredspirit.com. Welcome back. The idea of a twin-engine Jabiru airplane came from Jabiru Aircraft Southern Africa, which is the South African dealer for Jabiru. They explain that parts of Africa are best flown over at great heights, and the prevalence of wild animals and AK-47s tends to make flyers nervous about outfield landings. Jabiru Australia got to work on the project and came up with the idea of mounting the engines on a short canard mounted on the firewall, rather than completely engineer wing-mounted engines. They modified one of their J430 airplanes for mounting two engine pods on the nose. The concept worked, and it turned out to be a relatively simple bolt-on modification. While the structure was finished and the molds were complete, the project was shipped to South Africa, where the airplane was completed into a flying prototype. Jabiru says the project has been a wonderful demonstration of cooperation between the two companies. Whether this configuration will be produced as a sport plane or a retrofit to the J430 airplane remains to be seen. Aviation crews from the South Carolina Army National Guard conducted recovery operations last Sunday, for a UH-60 Black Hawk helicopter that made an emergency landing in a cornfield just outside of Columbia, South Carolina. Due to the site conditions and damage to one of the rotor blades, crews decided to sling load the roughly 11,000 pound Black Hawk underneath a CH-47 Chinook helicopter. Safety and maintenance crews removed the rotor blades and all of the fuel in the aircraft to prepare it for transport. Lieutenant Colonel Andrew Batten said, quote, 10 years ago, we were doing this exact type of operation in Iraq. It's a training opportunity for our younger soldiers, end quote. The Adjunct General of the South Carolina National Guard, Major General Robert E. Livingston, said, quote, It looks simple when you do it right. This is what we do. It's American military citizen soldiers, end quote. Well, that's our program for Friday, December 12th. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories at aero-news.net. Remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. Join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new episode. And remember, the debut of Airborne Unlimited is now less than a month away. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.